In the last of our standard electrophilic aromatic substitutions, we're going to look at the friedel crafts acylation reaction. In this reaction, instead of using an alkyl chloride, we're going to use an acyl chloride. That means we're going to have a carbonyl directly attached to the carbon that holds the chlorine. And in this case, we're going to be able to attach uh, our um, we're going to be able to make a ketone first off, and we're going to see later that we could remove the oxygen double bond and end up with an alkyl group. So it's a way that we can add a primary center onto a benzene as well if we wanted a primary alkane uh, group uh, on our benzene. So it, as with all the electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, we should discuss how the electrophile is formed. And this will be very surprising because if we take a look at our acyl chloride, and our Lewis acid, as before. I bet this will be surprising to you. But look what's going to happen. Our chlorine is going to go ahead and attach itself onto the aluminum. Very big surprise. And what's more of a surprise, though, is I've actually moved more left, meaning I have some room to actually draw this out, which is always nice. So we have our positive chlorine. We've got our negative aluminum here. So, interestingly enough, the exact same thing happens as before. Chloride leaves uh, to stay on the aluminum instead, leaving us with an acelium ion. And what's interesting about this, I'm going to actually draw the carbon in this time because now it's a, a carbocation, so it's cleaner. Um, and so it doesn't make sense to draw it linearly uh, otherwise. So, uh, we've got our, our kind of uh, acylium here, which uh, actually will resonate. There's actually a better resonance form available, which I should draw before starting to draw the next molecule, uh, once the oxygen electrons come on in. Because remember, uh, a, chlor a carbon with only six valence is much less stable than an oxygen that's positively charged. So remember that carbocations, remember unfilled octets like carbocations are always very bad. Right, and if we can do something to stabilize them, we will. We saw this with the alkylation reaction that it would rearrange itself. Um, and in this case, it's not rearranging itself, it's resonating. So we end up with a positively charged oxygen, which is uh, better because that oxygen still has an octet. Even though it's uh, the less electropositive atom, it's still uh, better than having it on the carbocation. So, it will resonate. And so we'll see that the predominant form of our electrophile will be this acelium ion. So we went from an acyl chloride to an acelium ion. And that's going to be our electrophile for the EAS reaction. And so uh, if we go ahead and take a look at what that looks like with benzene, I bet y'all are sick of this by now, but don't worry, it's our last one. We've got our positive oxygen there. We're going to go ahead and attack the carbon because the carbon is the electrophilic site. Uh, we're going to end up popping open that oxygen carbon bond. And lo and behold, we will now have a, a ketone uh, along with our carbocation on the benzene and our dear friend the chlorine that's on the aluminum is going to come on in and grab that proton, just like with any other EAS reaction, and we produce HCl, and we regenerate our catalyst, uh, and we go ahead and reform our aromatic compound with the ketone. And so we can install a ketone on. Uh, our group can be a methyl, ethyl, propyl, isopropyl, whatever you want. Uh, thankfully, we have a, a wide variety of options here. And there, in fact, exist many ways to get rid of a ketone. We can turn the ketone into an alkane through uh, various different means. Uh, and what we're going to use here uh, typically is zinc amalgam and HCl. Uh, that's one way to do it. Uh, so zinc and mercury, along with hydrochloric acid, uh, is 
what's called a Clemenson reduction. And we do not need to worry about the mechanism for the Clemenson reaction. All it does is gets rid of the carb uh, the ketone, gets rid of the carbonyl. So we're left with our R group, whatever that may have been. So this is a way of actually, um, we could alkylate a ring using an acylation reaction and then getting rid of the ketone. Sometimes you want the ketone. If the ketone is your final goal, that's great. But if you wanted an alkane on, we saw the problem with the Friedel-Crafts alkylation reaction was that it has a carbocation intermediate that, that rearranges. And so we can't ever end up with a position uh, on the benzene that's primary, uh, or that used to be primary, rather. Uh, so we can't put a propyl group on. But with a Friedel-Crafts acylation, we can put a propyl group uh, by first putting on the ketone and then reducing it later. It turns out, in fact, that the ketone will actually deactivate the group, making it less reactive. And since the problem with polyalkylation was that the alkyl groups make the ring more reactive, a ketone actually makes the ring less reactive. So we're also in no danger of polyalkylating or polyacylating our benzene. So only one uh, will happen. We'll get our, our ketone on, and then if we want, we can reduce it. So if we summarize, we're going to take our benzene, react it with a ketone, I'm sorry, an acyl chloride. Here, how about propyl chloride and our catalyst? And we will end up adding our ketone on. And if we are so inclined, we could add our zinc amalgam. So that zinc and mercury mix together, that's an amalgam. Uh, and we will end up getting propyl benzene out. So we remove our C double bondo. Or rather, it just removes the oxygen itself. So the Clemenson, so it removes the C double bondo, um, turns it into two CHs instead. So it gets rid of our carbonyl, it makes it into an alkane instead. And again, sometimes this is valuable, sometimes it's not. It merely depends what you want. Remember, you cannot put propyl benzene on with a Friedel Crafts alkylation because of carbocation arrangements. So, this would be the only way to put that on if that's what you needed. And finally, one more thing to note is that this particular reaction, the Friedel Crafts acylation, cannot take place in the presence of an amine. It's hard to do it in the presence of an alcohol as well, uh, but amines are worse. You can't do this if you have an alcohol or amine present, you're going to get something else as a result. You're not going to get an acylation reaction you're going to have other reactions happening that will be preferred. And those are reactions we're going to cover later on in the semester when we talk about amines uh, or uh, esters. So we're not going to uh, have to worry about those right now. Just be aware that you cannot use a Friedel Crafts reaction in the presence of an amine or an alcohol. So uh, just like you couldn't use a Grignard with either of those functional groups, you can't do that with uh, an uh, Friedel Crafts acylation. So. so, just keep that in mind. More things to learn, right? In our next video, because there's always more, we're going to look at a series of reactions called Sandmeyer reactions. And those are going to be the end of our EAS journey so far. And then next week, we'll talk about directing effects of how substituents affect each other as well as nucleophilic aromatic substitution. And so, see you in the next video.